hour number three. We're going to go over to Europe this hour, to Denmark, and talk to a, a friend of mine and a friend of yours, although many of you don't realize that Soren Dreyer uh, sends uh, a lot of really fine news stories to help me in my selection process and has helped populate the site with some high-quality material for a long time. He is a, a gentleman. He is also uh, quite an erudite and well-informed man on many levels. And uh, let's see how our connection is. Soren, can you hear me all right? Yes, I can, Jeff. Uh, thank you for being here. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course, and thank you for all the uh, wonderful material you have sent for such a long time. It, uh, it's more than appreciated, and it has helped people around the world, uh, I think, understand reality and get a better grip on this uh, this insane asylum that uh, our planet has turned into. You also have an eclectic ability to pull stories that are off the beaten path and are very unusual and always fun to read and interesting. So, uh, well done. Thank you, Jeff. It's yeah. been an honor. Yeah. Okay, now, your, your background covers uh, many areas that aren't exactly front-page news. Uh, you have talked about, written about dying and what happens to us, what we're here for, uh, near-death experiences, uh, which really seem to be one of the most remarkable experiences that uh, still living people uh, can report about. And if, if any of you read much about so-called NDEs, you'll understand that they, they are, they are mind-boggling. Uh, so, some come from people who have been in, in, uh, involved in serious disease for a long time, uh, almost dying, Others are involved in, in violent uh, acts uh, of uh, criminality, being shot uh, in, the, in the operating room. Some are in automobile accidents uh, and so forth. But NDEs, near-death experiences, really, to me, Soren, almost qualify to be called after-death experiences. I, I yes. just I see it the other way. Yeah, and I actually agree with you, Jeff, because what fascinated me when I started out on examining what is this, what is going on in the process of what we call dying, mm -hmm. um, yet that experience <clears throat> actually goes cross-culture, and uh, science sure couldn't provide me with, with an answer. It's all about chemistry, right? Sure. But uh, according to them, um, and it probably is a big rush of endorphins, but what is very interesting is that uh, people all over the world see the same thing. They report of the light, they report of the tunnel, warmth, feeling safe, and uh, coming back, they have a profound uh, change in actually both mundane and spiritual perspective, but what really, really, what I really think is cool is that so-called atheist people who don't believe in anything after mm -hmm. this life, and they're, they're welcome to do that, also had, um, also have a spiritual uh, epiphany, mm -hmm. and that's quite interesting. I read a story in the early 80s about a high-profile CEO on Volvo who had an accident, and he had a near-death experience, I think it was in Spain, and he was absolutely, he described himself as a very very cold person. He didn't connect to this world very much emotionally. Mm -hmm. And after that, he gave up his, his job and uh, started giving seminars around the world in how to treat each other right. And um, there is a meaning, there's a point to all this. That's so, fascinating. Uh, very, it's, it's, the, it's the idea that people who go through these, I would call them after-death experiences, uh, have changed sometimes dramatically, like the man you just described. They don't see things the same. The change isn't necessarily instant. It can take weeks or months to fully manifest. But somehow this experience, in many cases, does redirect people on their pathway uh, through life. Uh, it, it, uh, it's, it's very, very interesting what goes on. Yeah, it, it it is also because we talk a lot, Jeff, about 
in the spiritual movement, if I may label it that way, we talk a lot about getting rid of the ego and connecting to the soul. Mm -hmm. But it seems that the NDEs, they trigger actually what's behind the soul, the spirit, you know, the connection with whatever God force people uh, may believe in. And there's certainly, in my point of view... Whatever God force, I agree, yes. Yeah, yeah, Uh, because it's not... But but what really, really triggers me, it's the same as I read a story on children in... um, Africa and chil- of children in the Australian bush who were told to do draw a painting of uh, an, an angel, right? Mm-hmm. And that also went cross culture. That they basically uh, draw the same painting, and <clears throat> when something hmm. it goes cross culture and it's out in territories where the mainstream media doesn't have access Mm -hmm. Um, it's really interesting because it's a field it seems to be a field that we connect to and uh, it obviously has a very profound impact on the person who experiences it and um, that's that's why I set out to sort of find out what what's really going on here and I studied at that point uh, I think a valid source. It, it's called the Tibetan Book of the Dead, mm-hmm. and it actually also uh, mentions near-death experiences, but in a, in a kind of different way. It says uh, when you <clears throat> when you leave your body, you know, stay in the first light, and um, I think it's that light people see that the the Tibetan Book of the Dead actually refers to, uh, because. There is something also going on after the near-death experience, which which haven't been explored that much, uh, because <clears throat> that's where they sort of stop. You know, they have this near-death experience, but it's still near death. It's not death. Um, and I think um, the Tibetan Book of the Dead mentioning the first light, it must refer to that experience that many people have in uh, modern society. It's a mm-hmm. very old book, right? And uh, <clears throat> And it also goes with, you know, the Tibetan book, uh, the Buddhist, right? Of uh, they, they don't want to be in the afterlife that for for too long. They say actually twenty one days, and then you have to come back to this life. Really? Well, yeah. That's, in, that's or, a, in 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 in, in in order not to stray, yeah. in order not to get seduced by. Uh, you know, the heavenly fears, or what we refer to call it. I, I actually like that expression. Huh. But, um, and that should be one of the reasons why, you know, they, um, there is a cool, cool mentioning, this cool story in the Tibetan Book of the Dead, uh, this uh, brother, he dies in, in um, the monastery, right? And they sit with their balls and they chant in order to keep the soul uh, near, near mm-hmm. the, the monastery, in order for them not to come back to a life uh, maybe in a big city. Uh, oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, it's very interesting. So they don't stray from the spiritual path they're on. And they see, you know, <clears throat> they see reincarnation a bit different than mainstream New Age, and I really like that, mm-hmm. uh, that that they sort of differ because they see it as a, as a wheel on a bicycle, you know, has a lot of these things. I don't know the word for them. But, Spokes. Uh, the, yeah, spokes, and uh, <clears throat> they say, well, when we're done with that, you know, we're free, we're free, and uh, that also triggered, you know, my perception of what is what is going on here, what is dying, because at that time I was working, it was in the early 80s, I was working at removing uh, unwanted spirits from people's houses, I never do that again, it's so scary, but... Uh, that's almost and, and re- like uh, exorcism of uh, an inanimate object uh, pulling yes. spirits out of houses. You you yeah, yeah. Right, you run a risk when you do that. Yes, I would never ever touch that again. But I, I yeah. think it was something I need to go through because, you know, I I am brought up in a Christian society, not by a Christian family. But I, mm-hmm. but I, as 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 a young man, I was actually very rude very religious on my own, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't make it fit, you know. I thought, well, if heaven is that cool and we all go there, why why are all these ghosts haunting people, these uh, spirits? And um, so I later found out that heaven is like the Italian bureaucracy. There is a meaning to it. (laughs) But, but, you know, yeah, but but I need to understand Heaven is like the Italian bureaucracy. Very good. Yeah, because I think they've we, had about a hundred governments since World War II, haven't they? Something like that. It's way yeah, up yeah. there. 
yeah, it's a mess, but there's some kind of order to it, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and that, that actually it was a Catholic priest who, who wrote that in an article. Mm-hmm. Um, but but it didn't fit with my with what Christianity sort of had to offer because the mysticism of dying is is to my knowledge, not that uh, clear in, in, in Christianity, or either uh-huh. th- I, I, either than we either go to heaven or hell, right? And uh, so I, I need to understand what is behind the near-death experience, right? What what comes after? And uh, it, I find it extremely interesting. Well, the, the the part that you mentioned that is really fascinating are the cross-culture similarities yeah. of NDEs. Now, I don't know anyone who has written a book about this or studied it, uh, perhaps as much as you. What what do you know about cross-culture similarities of the NDE itself? What 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 kinds of things happen? You mentioned the light uh, is seen by people. It doesn't matter what country, where they are. If they have an NDE, they, they do see the light. Is that one? That is one. Uh, they, they kind of vary a, a little, but they also do within a given society, if we talk about the Western society, right? Uh-huh. And I think there was an author also, um, I don't remember if he was uh, present in the late 70s, but early 80s, called Raymond A. Moody, who, who did oh, a lot I know. of... He was on, yeah. I've had him on the program, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he did a lot of cool research, but it seems like even in, in the same culture, it can differ a bit, but, but yeah, basically... Basically, you, we, we probably can make a list of sort of eight things that uh, people see. They see the light, they feel safe, they feel some kind of heavenly bliss. <clears throat> they can see spirits, that why I, that's why I mentioned spirits, like the angelic realm, you would say in Christianity. Uh, they would meet a very kind person that they trust, that could be grandmother, some uh, see, some claim to see Jesus. Um, they, but they see sort of relatives, long gone relatives. Some hear celestial music. Um, some are bathed in forgiveness and bliss. And um, I find that very interesting, obviously. But also children coming back, you know, children coming back from near-death experiences. Mm-hmm. I talked, I, I once got a call to go to the e- I, I see you in a hospital in Denmark with a 15 year old girl mm-hmm. uh, my my wife knew and uh, <clears throat> she was also torn up in a car accident and uh, she had a near death experience and and she told me and uh, this this was actually in the late 70s she told me I, I met this person she said to me uh, she was in her hospital bed and um, she was not religious, but but she started to talk about uh, sort of. She, she mentioned Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And and um, he said, "Well, um, this is it." He, he said, "You are, you know, uh, yeah." He he sort of uh, calmed her, and she said, "Oh, I don't I don't want to go now because I'm not finished dancing. I so much love dancing." And she was sent back, <laughs> and I thought that was pretty cool. And actually, a lot of people. They, they seem to also could, you know, not bargain, but say that there, there are two ways in this, because some are told it's not your time yet, you have to go back. And they go, oh, because they really like that celestial uh, ambience, that celestial experience, right? Who, who wants to come back from that? Um, so, so they go reluctantly back to this life. Some go back to this life with a meaning of purpose. And some seem to say, well, I hope it's not my time yet because I so much love being here. I so much love doing what I'm doing. And they, they actually uh, get sent back, if I can use that expression. And uh, that just goes to show, you know, that um, for, when I when I learned about this, Jeff, I thought, well, where's the judgment here? We are we are hammered with. Where mm. are, where yeah. are the lifted finger? Where is the very strict God? It's all about <clears throat> sort of, to me, obviously cooperation at a very high level, at a very high frequency, mm-hmm. but also but also this understanding of, 
And we, I think we walk around this earth and think, well, our life is written in stone and someday we will have to depart on that giving, given day. Um, I, I actually, it, it rocked my belief system in, in, into those perimeters because this is not a prison camp. This is, this is not an institution for people with a bad karma, as some mm. would, would, would say. Mm-hmm. This is, I think we come here because no, no matter who we are, actually, we have a job. You, you have a great job, Jeff. You make a huge impact in, in this world, I think. And uh, we also have, you know, what I like to call the more silent existences who goes to work, raise their kids. And that's a huge job. That's you bet it job. is. Oh, yeah. Uh, Being a, yeah. A, a proper parent, an effective parent, a communicator uh, to uh, in this world with young people, uh, maybe yeah. the toughest job of all. Yeah, and it goes, and I'm not using this as a cliché, Jeff, but, you know, every life is equally important. Yeah. And um, every every soul on this earth gets this um I think it's obviously something I cannot prove, but every, I think every person on this planet gets these NDEs, and uh, there are no persons that are not cut out for the celestial, and that, that that really corresponds with my spirit because that kind of specialness we see, especially in the New Age movement, mm-hmm. is is. Uh, it's the same as we see in the mainstream newspapers, you know. It's uh, it's 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 ridiculous, you know. They they say we're all one and we're all love, and then yeah, you, you that's okay to say that, but please. No, don't they missed the, they missed missed the point entirely. I think. Yeah, uh, and yeah. please don't be special when when yeah. you say those words, right? Yeah. Because yeah. then we are not all one. We're not all connected, and uh, of course we are. Of course we are connected. So, so there is this field uh, somewhere. Uh, my friend, the late Stuart Wilde, said it was forty degrees left of our foreheads. Um, I still huh. think of it. I still think of it as up there. You know, when he referred to heaven, when he referred to heaven, he said it isn't that far away. It's it's about forty centimeters from the left. Uh, from the left of the forehead. Really? No, I yeah. didn't know this. That's very. That's fascinating. F- f- uh. Huh. Yeah, um, that's the way he perceived it. But <clears throat> I think you know these perceptions of the celestial, they're very subjective. But I also think they're very objective because you're, if you have one, Jeff, and I, I, I know you. I think you have, you know, an idea of what the celestial is. I think that idea is correct. And if I have an idea of what the celestial is, I also actually think that is correct. Because we are not going into, as some writers out there seem to advocate now, we're not going into a new matrix. Mm-hmm. We're going, we're going not into a new guidance system, not going into a, a, a new power trip. Um, and and we have this, and I also find this very fascinating. We We say, you know, when we go about our day we all make our own reality right um we we we, we actually know you know we can carry one thing with us and that's the consciousness that's all we have to take away from here Um, and that's all we can go with Mm -hmm. and if we if we say in life yeah we make up our own reality every day as we go along i actually also think that goes for the afterlife but uh, well, why should that disappear from the consciousness? So, um, if a righteous Muslim thinks that uh, when he has a good life, according to Islam, he'll sit next to Allah, he'll probably experience that. Uh, when um, with a very hardcore Christian thinks, yeah, uh, when I'm if if I go through these strict commands in my life, mm-hmm. I'll, pr- I'll probably sit next to Jesus in the afterlife. That's what he will experience. And uh, if a Buddhist, uh, to me, Buddhism isn't a r- religion; it's a philosophy. <clears throat> but it's a it, belief it, system, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, if if they think, yeah, I'll experience total freedom, uh, they'll experience that. And I think that comes after the near-death experience, that comes after where we sort of go into an illusion, a little matrix that we have to dissolve. And um, it's all also programming uh, when I talk of uh, Islam, when I talk of Christianity. Um, And we have to get rid of that programming. And I think, I think that's why people 
have invented hell also uh, because we have to put we have to put our sort of belief system into a mundane mundane construct in order to understand the afterlife and uh, I don't think that always cut it I had an email the other day I, I thought it was quite funny they said do dead people pay taxes <laughs> sure <Huh. laughs> because <clears throat> they would live in a house in the afterlife and so on and uh, and that's it was a serious a uh, email yeah but it actually made sense because some people claim that. Some people claim that um, uh, when we go into the afterlife or the realm after the afterlife, we sort of can have a little house with a garden. Actually, people have reported that and, and wrote about it. I don't know whether to trust it, right? Uh, actually, I, I don't mm -hmm. think it is so. But if, if it's their reality, it's their reality. So um, there's a lot of interpretation. and, and That's uh, a fun, That I, is a funny email. Uh, yeah, I never yeah. thought of such. And I think we do probably predispose ourselves toward at least experiencing a portion of what we expect, if not a lot of it. And that's yeah. what you're talking about. We we do predispose ourselves toward an expectation. But back to the the NDE issue and the light and yeah. the feeling of 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 bliss and absolute safety and and protection and completely cut away from any ego or or mundane kind of concern with day-to-day -day reality the day-to-day -day troubles it is absolute liberation from everything that can cause someone grief duress angst anguish stress you, you, it can be, and it it can be so warm physically. I I don't know if it's physical, but I would imagine that this warm feeling is part of the security. It, it's an overwhelming. I I just am not going to say much more than this, but it's it is seemingly absolutely indescribable if it is as intense as, as most people seem to experience it. Yes. Remarkable. Yes. Okay. All right. We'll be right back in just a couple of minutes with Soren Dreyer. Stay tuned. 